What's up you guys and welcome back to OMGG. All right, so I know there's there's huge elephants, not elephant, elephants plural, multiple in the room or in the car. And I'm going to explain that to you. Number 1, there's no longer as told by GG 101. That's done. Number 2, I fully am aware that I have not been on this channel in quite some time, but I'm also fully aware that I did do all 25 days of Vlogmas, and I did day 26, and currently am vlogging day 27. Now, if you would like an explanation to all these questions that you might be having, I would like to direct you here. That's right. We have a podcast, and we are already on seven episodes by the time you see this video. Now, in the very first episode of our podcast, OMGG, I go over why I changed my name, why I've been away from my channel. So if you want to know the answers to all those questions, all you have to do is simply pause this video, go to your podcast website, wherever you listen to them, and you'll get the answers to all your questions. Now, now that we've addressed all the elephants in the room, Let's get into this recap review, whatever, of Pretty Little Liars, Season 1, Episode 1. What kind of logic? All right, you guys. So basically, I did a poll on my Instagram and I asked what kind of videos you guys wanted to see, like recap reviews, and a lot of you wanted to see going through Pretty Little Liars all over again. And I was so game for that because I am struggling, I'm struggling with not having Pretty Little Liars anymore. I'm fully aware it's been like, what, two years since the show went off air? but I haven't found another show that's captivated my interest the same way Pretty Little Liars has. And since a lot of you started watching me, the last 10 episodes of the series finale, I figure why not? We can kind of go through this journey again. Plus, everyone thought that it would be really cool to go back and watch the first season and the first episode and try to pick up on things that we missed. So I'm not sure if these are things that I necessarily missed, but they're definitely things that I paid closer attention to and more questions that I had as the seasons had progressed and now going back and watching the first one. So the very first episode of Pretty Little Liars, it's where we are introduced to every single one of the characters. And the show starts off with how it all began. It starts off with all the girls partying in Spencer's barn. And then they're drinking, they're having a great time, you know, as adolescents do considering they were only 14 15 years old and I don't know why we thought that it was okay to encourage this but you know mm -hmm. that's cool so they're in the barnyard they're drinking all of a sudden the door swings open and they just kind of get shook and start walking towards the door me personally I would have been shook and ran out the door screaming bloody murder with any item that I could have found swinging it in case somebody wanted to jump out at me because we don't play them games but you know, they walk slowly towards the door and then they hear a shattering of glass and it's like, what was that? What was that? Who was that? It was Allison. It was Allison. She walks in and she fiddles with something in her bag and then she tells Aria to drink up. Spencer says, slow down. You might share all your secrets. And Allison says, secrets is what keeps us close. Let's talk about that for a second. So later on in the season, we find out that Allison had actually drugged all the girls. So I think it's pretty safe to say that when she was fiddling in her bag, it was to get whatever it was that she put in the drinks to drug them. Um, but I still wanna know, where did she get those pills? And how did they not see her slip it into the cup? They were all looking at her because they looked up to Allison. So they followed very closely her every move. So I'm really, really, really confused as to how they didn't see her slip anything into the drink. But that's okay. So they drink, they all fall asleep. Ari is the first one to wake up and realizes that Allison is gone. Funny, nobody realized that Spencer was also gone. Just Allison. 
of course. So they leave the barn yard. Well, she starts to walk towards the barn door because the barn door was once again open. And Spencer appears looking sus AF. Allie's gone. They're like, what? She's gone. I think I heard her scream. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I first started watching Pretty Little Liars, I was like, mm, you look sus. You're the last one to see her alive. You're not going to tell me you don't look guilty. Because you do. It's as simple as that. But moving forward with the show, and especially ending the series the way that we did with finding out that A cubed, because we all know there's three different A's at this point, A cubed was her twin, this would have been a really nice way to have tied in Spencer having a twin. Because when Spencer left the barnyard and came back, the person who left could have been Spencer, but the person who came back could have been Alex. You see? But that couldn't have happened because, number one, in the first season of any show, most people aren't expecting to get a second season, so they have to write with the intention of there only being one season and the viewer having a beginning and an ending to the show, right? Okay, that's fair. And then in Pretty Little Liars' case, um, they were only supposed to do six seasons, which is why it ended the way that it did, which was actually really good. Freeform begged for another season, which is how we got crappy-ass season seven, and... The rest is history. However, going back to the very first episode and also linking it to season seven, that would have been a really good portion right there of how Alex and Spencer could have been linked. And it could have been a flawless link because there wouldn't have been, oh, one has bangs and the other one doesn't. She would have looked exactly like Spencer and nobody would have caught on and it would have been a really great shocker at the very end of the series. Because in that very first instant, we automatically think Spencer is the guilty party. Because like I said before, she was the last one to see Allison. And when everybody woke up looking for Allie, Spencer was the one that they actually found. So then we move on and a paper is thrown and it says, girl still missing, referring to Allison. So it's at this point where everything starts to tie in. As we know from watching the show later on, Arya returns from Iceland from the sabbatical with her dad. Um, Emily is uh, on the swim team and dating Ben. Spencer just redid the barn and Melissa's taking it over with her new fiance Ren which is just like we all got Spencer's frustration in that moment Hannah's still hanging out with Mona stealing everybody's crap from the mall and Allison is still missing so the first episode follows through with everything it follows through with Arya getting acclimated to being back in Rosewood it follows up with Hannah now losing all this weight and Mona being popular and both of them being basically the Gretchen Wieners and Regina George of Rosewood High School Emily is still struggling really hard with the loss of Allison and we all know it's because she had this big lesbian crush on Allison Delorantes. Um, however, a new girl, Maya St. Germain, moves into Allison's home, and we see kind of the beginning of Emily's first true experience liking a girl and going through all those emotions and confusion in the first episode. The first episode was like so jam packed, you guys. But then we also see the progression of A first. So, before I jump into something very important with Aria, I just really want to note to you guys something that I noticed. Um, the importance of the order in which they all got their texts in. So, Aria got the text first, followed by Emily, followed by Spencer, followed by Hannah. But in the first episode, we only see the link to the secrets of Aria and Spencer. So Aria gets the first text in reference to her kissing Ezra in the bathroom when she meets him on the first day of school, which I'm also going to talk about that. We're going to talk a lot about RB in this first episode because I feel like RB was the central focus of the first episode aside from Allison. So 
Aria is sitting in her classroom, first day of high school. Ezra walks in as the new teacher, and he turns around, and he goes, <gasps> Oh, crap. And everybody turns and looks at Aria, who was looking down, writing, What notes? I'm not exactly sure. You know what? Maybe she was writing her header. That's what it was. She was writing her header. She's writing her header, and then she looks up. They make eye contact, and now everybody's looking at her, and they know that something clearly went down in the DMs of Ezra Fitz and R.B., So, she gets the first message right after that, referring to him making out with students in comparison to her father making out with his student, which was why they went on this sabbatical. So, we, we get a reference because they also do a flashback of that, which they actually did the flashback before she actually got the text message. So, we understand why Arya got that text message because we had seen the flashback prior. Then moving on to Spencer and her text, with Spencer, it was about Spencer kind of flirting a lot with Ren, who was Melissa's new fiance, and she's looking at them throughout her window, kind of being a little bit of a creep, and then she goes to her computer because she gets an email, and the email's from A, and it references her kissing. I think it was like... Remember, no, it was like, poor Spencer, always wanting Melissa's boyfriends. Remember, if you kiss, I tell. I don't know why I remember that. Maybe because I just watched the episode, so it's really fresh in my mind. But I remember that exactly. And then we go into the flashback of the whole situation with Ian. Now, those are the only two. We don't see the reference to Emily's text, nor do we see really the reference to Hannah's text. I mean, in theory, we kind of do, because in that very same scene, we also hear Allison make the statement about Hannah eating the cookie. And then if we go all the way back to the front, uh, to the very beginning of the episode, where Emily asked Allison in the barnyard if she had seen Beyonce's new video and she said not yet and Emily said I really liked it and Allison said maybe a little too much M which made everybody look confused maybe you can say that that's really the reference but you only see two specific references to those text messages which would be Aria and Spencer now let's go back to Aria because this makes absolutely no sense so later on in the season, Ezra tells Arya, when we first find out that Ezra knew about Allison and was writing a book, he tells her that he sought her out. Can we just talk about that? You're a recent college grad, right? So let's just do some quick assumption math. He's a recent college grad. Let's just assume he did his bachelor's. And let's just assume he did the traditional four years. Let's also assume that he went to college right after high school. You traditionally graduate high school at about 18. So 18 plus 4 is 22. So he's about 22 years old in a bar. No one's talking about the fact that RB was even in a bar at 16 years old. And actually, I get it, it's a bar and grill, but she was actually sitting at the bar. And if I remember correctly, you're not allowed to sit at the bar unless you're... 21 plus you'd have to sit at a table that's neither here nor there it's broad daylight in the middle of the day and she's sitting at the bar Ezra is reading a book and sitting literally one bar stool away from her and he looks over at her and he begins to make conversation now in the first episode it kind of looked like it was just a fluke like they met they clicked and bada bing bada boom that was it but once we go later on in the season we find out that he sought her out can we just talk about how disgusting and creepy that is a 22 year old grown man sought out and seeked a 16 year old girl you knew she was 16 you knew she was underage and as an educator you're not going to tell me that you did not know she wasn't in your class because you usually get a roster of your students so, what? Now, I don't know if the writers later on down the line when they wrote that scene remembered everything. And it's fair to say that they didn't. But I think when you are a true fan of the show or you watch it to every detail, you notice those things. You're like, hmm. Even when watching that episode in real time, you're like, but wait a minute, if you knew who she was, how did you still 
like choose to be with her knowing how old she was like no ew you're disgusting and then, you know, okay, I'm not, I don't want to get ahead of myself because we're still just on episode one. I was going to start talking about the rest of the episodes before we find out all that stuff, but I'm not going to get ahead of myself. So we find all that out. So I thought that was very interesting in regards to RB and Ezra. And as you guys know, I'm not a fan of RB. And I realized watching the first episode again why I'm not a fan of RB. I just, she's irritating. She's irritating. But then there was also something else that I noticed and I thought maybe could be the reason as to why um, Mona, because we all know at this point that Mona was A in the first season, why Mona did things the way that she did. So in the flashback to where Arya sees her father's car and sees him making out with his student, right before that, Allison and Arya were walking down the street and Mona was calling after them. Arya did say to Allison, maybe we should stop and wait for her. But Allison, being the jerk that she was, or still is, whatever you want to say, says no and tells, grabs Arya and runs off around the corner, which is how she runs into her father's car in the whole situation. And that made me think that may be why Arya got the first text. Because it was really the first time that we see... What did they call her? Nerdy Mona? Geek Mona? Dork Mona? Unpopular Mona? Crazy Mona? It's the first time that we see Mona for who she really is, aside from the Gretchen Wieners Mona that we know um, once Hannah and she became popular. So I thought maybe that's why she picked Arya first, because it was the first time we actually see her, and that's the first incident where we see Allison and another member of the group being mean to her. So I thought that was really interesting. Did you guys peep that? Did you guys think that? Either way, that is it for my recap review whatever of Pretty Little Liars. Yeah, so leave me a comment down below with what your thoughts are. If you haven't and you would like to, maybe you can rewatch the series with me as well and refresh all of our minds on every episode and put your thoughts and your comments down below. You don't have to agree with me. I'm always interested in hearing what you have to say. I will see you guys next Tuesday. Of course, I kept it on a Tuesday because tradition. I will see you guys next Tuesday for our next recap review whatever of season one episode two, Pretty Little Liars. Loves and likes ya. Bye.